for the New Hampshire test on the biolo biology and control of ticks. The American dog tick. The American dog tick is the most commonly encountered tick in New Hampshire. Is it about 1 8 inch or 4 to 5 millimeters long, brown and tan with an obvious pattern on the surface markings on the back? American dog tick slide 2. The American dog tick is a three host tick because it must find and feed on hosts three times to complete its two year life cycle. The species is in every county in the state. The American dog tick slide three. The dog tick begins the life cycle as an egg, one of hundreds laying on the ground in a mass by a female tick. The egg then hatches into a larva which has six legs. The larva remains on the ground in leaf litter or in low vegetation waiting for a small mammal to come by, usually a rodent. It then attaches the animal and feeds for several days. Then it drops off and molts to the nymphal stage, which has eight legs. Again, it waits on a host, and when that tick attaches and feeds for several days, when fully fed, it drops off and molts to the adult stage. American Dog Tick 4. Adult dog ticks wait on shrubs or tall grass to attached to larger mammals such as people, deer, or pets. They also take several days to engorge or feed. A fully engorged female with a blood meal can be almost the size of a dime, appearing smooth and shiny. Mating takes place on the host for dog ticks. When females are fully fed, they drop off and lay eggs. The dog tick's life cycle can be three months, but is typically two years. American dog ticks can last a long time without feeding. This species can transmit the organism that causes Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is not common in New Hampshire. Despite the fact that the spherocet bacterium, if you will, that causes Lyme disease has been found in American dog ticks, test proves that it cannot transmit the organism to a host. Let's take a look at the winter tick. The winter tick is smaller in appearance than the American dog tick in size and shape. The winter tick is an effective, is an active in summer and completes the development on one host. It is often found on moose, deer, or horses in the fall. The winter tick doesn't normally bite people and doesn't transmit agents that cause diseases in people. Winter tick biology. Eggs of the winter tick hatch in spring, but the larvae remain bunched together in a torpor all summer long. They don't become active until weather cools down in the fall, which would be the winter tick does not become active until cold weather comes in the fall. As with other ticks, they wait on leaf litter or low vegetation for a host to brush by. Winter ticks, after attaching to a suitable host, this species remains on the animal, feeding and molting until fully grown. The winter tick then drops off and eggs are laid on the ground in the spring. Looking at the third slide of the winter tick, in New Hampshire, this species has been found as far south as Durham, Nottingham, Wilton, and Roxbury, but is generally encountered further north. Hunters may occasionally put their hand in a group of larvae, and as many as 50 of these ticks have been found on a glove or a pant leg. The larvae are brown and about the size of a pinhead. Winter ticks are severely affecting the moose population by affecting calves. Let's take a look at the black-legged tick. The black-legged tick is the second most common tick in New Hampshire. Until 1993, northern specimens were considered a separate species called a deer tick. The black-legged tick is small and more rounded than a dog tick. The black-legged tick also has no molting, or sorry, modeling on its back. Adult males of the black-legged tick are dark brown and almost black. Adult females of the black-legged tick are two-tone, dark brown in head, legs, and scutum. They are orange-red in the rear half of the body. Looking further at the black-legged tick, black-legged tick nymphs are about the size of a pinhead. Adults are about 1 16th of an inch or 2 to 3 millimeters long. When fully engorged, the black-legged tick with a blood meal as a female can be 3 eighths to 10 millimeters long. Looking at the black-legged tick on slide 3, this species carries the vector that caused Lyme disease. 
They also carry pathogens that cause babesis and anaplasmosis. The black-legged tick occurs in all 10 counties, but are most abundant in the southeast. Looking at the fourth slide of the black-legged tick, the life cycle of the black-legged tick is similar to three host ticks. The life cycle takes two years. Larvae are most common on mice, other mammals, and birds. Nymphs bite these as well as medium-sized mammals and people. In the black-legged tick, adults usually attach to large mammals such as deer. Black-legged ticks are active from October through November and March through May. Black-legged tick nymphs are active from May 15th to mid-July. High populations of deer are required for this tick to be abundant. Looking at tick-borne diseases on our first slide of diseases, ticks can spread several diseases. The common ones are babesiosis, Lyme disease, and anaplasmosis. Looking at Lyme disease on our first slide, Lyme disease is the most common vector-borne transmitted by insects or ticks disease in the U.S. Lyme was first discovered near Lyme, Connecticut in the mid-1970s. It is caused by a spherichet or bacterium and elongated corkscrew-shaped bacteria named Borrelia burgdorferi. In New Hampshire, Lyme disease, actually New Hampshire is the seventh in the U.S. for the number of cases for people with Lyme disease. Looking at Lyme disease and case studies on our new slide, most cases are reported in Rockingham, Hillsborough, and Stratford counties. In the study detailed, 60% of black-legged ticks in New Hampshire tested positive with the Lyme disease pathogen Borrelia burgdorferi. Lyme disease transmission on our next slide. Cycle transmission begins with a black-legged tick or larva or nymph feeding on an infected reservoir host. In the reservoir host, after getting infected with the agent, the ineffective agent builds up to a high, relatively high level in the blood, but the animal does not show ill effects. Ticks feeding on infected reservoir hosts pick up the spirochet bacterium along with their blood meal. So the reservoir host serves as, serves as an amplifier for the pathogen. The white-footed mouse is the main host for Lyme disease in New Hampshire. Looking at Lyme disease transmission too, the feeding tick picks up the bacteria along with its blood meal. After feeding, the tick digests its meal and transforms to the next life stage. This takes weeks or months. When the tick attaches to another host and begins feeding again, the bacteria multiply in the tick's gut. Some of them penetrate the gut wall and travel to the salivary glands. As the tick feeds, it injects some bacteria into the host. Adults require more than 25 hours of feeding to infect the host, while nymphs may need a little less. Looking at the next slide are symptoms of Lyme disease. Symptoms of Lyme disease in people frequently, 70-80% of the time, begin with a characteristic red zone or rash around the site of the tick bite. Lyme disease usually appears about 30 days after being bitten. Lyme disease symptoms can include fatigue, fever, headaches, stiffness, and pain in the muscles and joints. Lyme disease, if untreated, can cause dizziness, irregular heartbeat, arthritis, joint pain, and swelling most commonly seen in the knees and other large joints. Most cases of Lyme disease are transmitted in May through mid-July. Most cases of Lyme disease are actually transmitted by nymphs. Looking at our next slide, the safe removal of ticks, it is recommended to use tweezers to grasp the tick during the removal instead of fingers. Grasp the tick as close to the head as possible and pull gently using low steady pressure. Do not yank it or pull it sideways since this could cause the head to break off in the wound. University of New Hampshire Cooperative Extension does not have the ability to test ticks. Looking at avoidance and sprays for ticks, our next slide, Pressurized sprays containing permethrin are registered for protection against ticks. Slick clothing and rubber boots also helps keep ticks off you. The most effective repellents for ticks include DEET. Picardin is a repellent that works well on mosquitoes and does work fairly well against ticks. 
When you look at reducing ticks on your property, the greatest mortality factor is for ticks drying out. You need to keep your lawn mowed and keep a mowed strip between play areas and thick brush. When you look at spraying ticks with pesticides, for controlling ticks outdoors, an early June insecticide spray to leaf litter can be effective to control black-legged ticks. A spray that has the pressure to turn over leaves and vegetation is most effective. Treatment in October can be affected on black-legged adults if the lower three feet of bush and shrubs are targeted. To control American dog ticks and nymphs of black-legged ticks, a spring May 15th application can be effective. Looking at the pesticides used in tick control, carbonate, carbonate, carbamates, carbiol or seven dust if you will, is a broad spectrum insecticide that works well. Carbamates usually last five to 10 days after spraying. Phenipyrazoles, fipronil, is used in products to control and protect pets from ticks and fleas. It is slow acting and highly toxic to people. Frontline is a product with fipronil. Pyrethrins are chemicals from a flowering plant. Synthetic pyrethroids, broad spectrum, can kill ticks for weeks after applying. Common examples of synthetic pyrethroids that would work are bifenthrin, cyfluthrin, cypermethrin, deltamethrin, lambda cyalothrin, and permethrin.